Tulane Blacktop. Heartland Motorsports Park, y'all. We have made it. And dang, I don't want to do another video about a racetrack closing, but it is. This place is freaking massive, huge. Nice tower, kind of starting line grandstands. Big set of grandstands there. Grandstands all across the way. You can see here, there's tons of room here. So this place was built as a multi-purpose racetrack. It's actually, I don't know if it still is or not, but home of the Sports Car Club of America, SCCA. I've been to three finals here, one one. I'm gonna take y'all around a little bit. Take a look at this place. Be the last time we're here. Go. All right, so we literally, we're going backwards, but we just pulled out from under the tower. And yes, the Durango is at its first NHRA event. And we make jokes all the time about how far it is back to the trailer. So this is actually the staging lanes here. You can see plenty big, plenty wide. I will most likely speed this up, but I just want to show y'all just how far it is. I should have been checking the mileage, but it's a long freaking way. You wear out a set of tires dragging your car to the starting line. So I need to check the mileage. I'm going to say it's over a half a mile for sure. Probably more than that. But anyway, just want to give you all a quick little rundown. Heartland Motorsports Park, Topeka, Kansas. All right, hot and sweaty Friday. And this man shows up. He has got on the new sick stop on that loud pedal shirt. That's cool, Number man. One. Did it come quick? Yes, it did. It came in like two days. No kidding. I bought, I bought my dad, I bought my brother, I bought everyone one I got in the family. That's cool. Yep. First one I've seen, y'all, right there. Go check it out. Links in the description. Okay, all right. We're out here in the heartland. It is a balmy, what? Uh, it feels like 109, I think. I think it's like actually 94, but either way, it is freaking hot. <laughs> so tell me this. Do you have a super special 112 degree makeup? Uh, I don't know. Is it have, is any of it still in my face? Because at this point, I really don't believe it would be. <laughs> and you really don't care? Uh, no, no. We're just here to do race car stuff. So if it's on, it's on. If not, it's not. <laughs> All right. For those of y'all that don't know, Kaylin has another business. She does sell makeup. And you can see I wear it every day. Yeah. Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's him that wears it. He's like the test pilot. Yes. Yeah. I'm, uh, when they say test it on animals, not humans, I'm the animal. Yeah. I'm not going to argue that, actually. <laughs> but what we do know, the next time we win a race... It's him. Mr. Clean. Yep. 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 Do you got something that will take care of a bald head? Oh, probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, we could probably take care of that. You good with that? She's oh, got yeah. some makeup for the top of your head. They said they were going to try and polish it. So yeah. I think ah. they're like skin safe. Polish. Head polish? Oh, I right. know there is. Bottom line, y'all, it is freaking hot. We are warmed up. We're ready to go. It has been good for our car. Chicago was hot. Denver was hot. Denver's always strange. But this is like the hottest conditions we've had all year by far. I don't know what she said the real feel is, 109 or whatever. Temperature is actually 99. And the density altitude, which is takes into account everything, is around 5,000 feet. So uh, 
the tune-up is going to be right on the money, I have no doubt, but I'm going to tell you, uh, it's not the same tune-up that we had wherever we raced last. Seattle, it's different. Always got to have a little last-minute thrash, right? Man, when you take a week off of work, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> what did we have going? So, we didn't have MSD on the warm-up, MS, all the MSD stuff. So, box-to-box D-net -box stuff, it's a AOS 5 cable. I don't know what that means. To connect all the boxes. <laughs> so, basically, we didn't have any deep boxes to work. So, we, we placed one cable, and it works. Just a little last-minute crash. No biggie. It's really just all data. Obviously, the car started up and run for the warm-up, and uh, they just didn't have any data, data. What is it? Data, data. What is it? Data, data. Data, data, data. data. I guess it depends where you're from. What is it for you? Data. Me too. You? I guess data. Yeah. And you yeah. cannot tell me otherwise. Yeah. It's like daddy corner. It's like tire. Corner. Yeah. It's daddy corner. Tomato. Tomato. Yeah, it's tomato. tomato. And it is pecan, not pecan. <laughs> <laughs>Play Milliken for Parts Plus. Biohaven, the folks at Summit Racing Equipment. If you haven't been following Clay's YouTube channel, you're missing out because they are definitely having some fun. Yeah, he's cranking out. He's been an engine on that thing, cranking out videos left, right, and center the last couple of years. But they keep getting better, and they're always entertaining. And the guy's uh, car guy through and through with all the projects he's got going on and the stuff he's doing. Working, of course, with the Rick Ware Racing Team. And they're having a pretty good season out here so far. Jim O, Jim Oberhofer, calling the shots on that car. And these, this car, if it passes first round, it's almost like get out of the way because it becomes a bulldozer after that. It is one of the weirdest all-or-nothing seasons I think I have ever seen. And it's just, like you said, if they get out of the first round, it's like get out of the way. Park. How about a 381 at 316 miles an hour? And Clay Milliken goes to the top. We see Josh Hart put numbers up at 3.86 and 314 miles an hour. And interesting, looking at the numbers down at the other end of the racetrack, maybe a little soft out there in the middle. Let's hear from Joe. Yeah, down here with Jim Overhoffer. They've already got two wins this year. What did you see on that run, Jimmo? Well, it went, it went down the track, so that'll make the boss man happy uh, back in uh, North Carolina. But, you know, it's some tough air here. I mean, this is uh, stuff we haven't seen uh, probably in a long time or ever, in my opinion. But um, you just got to go A to B, and uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings us to. And here with Clay Milligan. This is on top of the board right now. Clay's firing up the YouTube channel here for us. and uh, firing up the YouTube channel here for us. <laughs> and, uh, Clay, Jim Oberhofer's up on the starting line. He said it was kind of weird air right now. Brian Lone's pointed out. But, you know, we hadn't been to Chicago in a while. You won. We, we you know, we hadn't. We, Denver is always kind of weird. It's the last race. It's the last race here. Things are weird. It's, that, it's like a good omen. Well, I'll tell you what. That is the 19th consecutive run this car has went down the racetrack. Wow. And it's hot. It's miserable. I appreciate all the fans being here. It was kind of warm in Chicago. It's always weird and warm in Denver. I like our chances right here in Topeka. And I hope to get to stomp on that loud pedal four times on Sunday, baby. Let's go. I think he's ready for Sunday now. I think, yeah, he is, he, is, he is ready to reorder the days of the week. The low zone making an appearance on the YouTube, y'all. He acted like he can't hear us. <laughs> All right, folks, so somewhat of a night run. 381, we'll take that. It's pretty dang hot outside. Not big speed. I think we squirted the center of a spark plug out. John said it, it uh, number one plug ceramic come out again but hey that's okay we were right down the racetrack that's the 19th consecutive run this thing's went down the track uh, that will get us qualified will it be 
number one as it is at this moment? I don't think so, but that's okay. That's all right. We, we made a good, clean, solid run, and we're in the, uh, the tech center, the inside. And y'all have met this gentleman before. This is retired General Lee Taffanelli. We, we, uh, we, we, we'll call you a friend of the channel for sure. You, <laughs> you've been here for uh, wins and runner-ups and first-round losses and maybe some DNQs over the years. We, we've seen it all, and uh, <laughs> certainly the winning's better than uh, any of the others. When did we do that? 18? Is that right? Yeah, that's when we won last. <laughs> on a Monday, I think. <laughs> Long weekend. Yes, it was, but a good one after yep. all was said and done. All right, I got to roll across the scales. They got to weigh my heavy butt and uh, get back to the trailer and get ready for tomorrow. I don't know what happened to the last bit. Uh, they both smoked the tires, so we're still low. Now we just got towards, and we, the worst we could be is third. I think it was just like right at the finish line with the blood coming out, coming right up on it. I think. What do I know? Dude, the butto meter hadn't been tested in a few weeks, which is weird. Dude, you do a lot for you talking. You and your butto meters. The butto meter. And I think the butto meter might have went a little further, too. Even though I knew the hole went out, I got a little mechanic going instead of driver going. The lighting's a little weird. Like, the track's real dark, you know, and it was whatever. Yeah, you know, it used to be, I was telling Bruce, yeah, look, we got no power. Yeah. <laughs> this, we're like back in Denver. Denver. Oh, my God. Hey, we did all right in Denver. We, we did. Somebody just got low. Yeah, sounds like it. I'm trying to watch it, dude. That's all right. Like I said, we got some, we got some little points out of it. We came in and called them cake points. find out what we got here setting number two right now 381 just pulling out of the pit area getting ready to go Clay Milliken his Sunday results have been easy if he wins first round get out of the way with a parts plus biohaven team been in the winter circle a couple of times he's also been in the trailer before lunch a number of times certainly has but that team's a team that has gelled as this season has gone on. A lot of new parts and pieces with that team. You know, Rick Ware came in and bought that organization away from Doug Stringer just before the U.S. Nationals last year. But in the offseason, they upped and moved the entire team out to Mooresville, North Carolina, where the NASCAR shop is as well. Jim Oberhofer went out and got some new crew members, brought over Jesse Snyder from Doug Coletta's car. Now he has Bruce Reed, the Australian top fuel legend over here, helping him as well. And they feel like this weekend and these type of conditions are the type of conditions that have been really advantageous to them. I, I'm not sure Bruce, Bruce Reed is a big help because I don't know if you know this, but in Australia, the crankshaft turns the other way. Did not. No. Yeah. yeah, that's a good that's point. Difficult. Man. Just like the water, right? Yeah. Second, Leah is currently fourth. Both had solid runs last night. Okay, that was eight kinds of odd. Both of them jumping the gun a little bit early. Both of them shutting off quite a bit early. Leah ends up with a 410 at 243. Clay goes 429 at 205 miles an hour. They both obviously will stand on their runs from yesterday, but that was just uh, a little bit odd from the get go. <laughs> I might have fibbed to y'all and said that uh, it's not as hot as yesterday. I'm sweating way more. I think the sun being out makes it uh, sweating enough that I had ants in my pants and I two-stepped it. But it's shot a plug out. Did the same thing yesterday and did it again. Got my buddy Nick back here today. Of course, y'all know Mr. Lee. But it's hot. 
got to figure this plug thing out. Not sure what's going on with that. Anyway, we'll get it ready to go again here in a little while. Come in here in a minute. Jimbo's going to squeeze my head off. Wow. Is any of that any good, Jimbo, because of the bubble? Well, kind of what happened was this, the, the, the car moved. And then, um, so kind of what happened is it, it looks like the clutch might have tried to go off early, earlier than what it should have, but it's, if you, because it looks like, like you got off, like you hit it and then you got back off it and then it reset here. Yeah. That's why I'm like so uh, so like what happened was like if you go off of this because the timers are already in action um, so now you move everything in so actually the clutch the clutch really went off like about it tenth and a half too soon from what it normally would because like this jet here would normally go off at eight tenths and yeah. it went off at six five because what happened was when you hit it the timers yep. went off and then when you got off of it they didn't reset right so then yeah. when you, you hit it again and then it got moving by then the clutch was just moving too fast at that point so so you can't look at none of that, basically. No, but it's all right. I mean, I kind of still got to look at the engine, and um, it's all it's it's good. Number eight plug that pisses me off. You know, the other thing is, is we're it's like I said, we run we're running a lot of compression here, but the only difference between here and Denver. We are trying to run more fuel in it, and, um, and so maybe it's creating more cylinder pressure. But that's—I don't know. I'm not—I'm not sure which way to go on this. Like, like tune-up wise, how do I fix this? All right, getting the thing ready for the last qualifier. We are still setting number two. Got to figure out what's going on with squirting the center, the ceramic out of the spark plugs, not sure. Uh, weird, never have had so much trouble with that ever. Uh, man, we're doing every kind of check you can imagine for that, but we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. Clay Milliken, the Parts Plus Biohaven team. So once again, we've got Tony Stewart racing on one side, Rick Ware racing on the other. You know, Clay Milliken, when we started this whole deal, was in the number two qualifying spot. All of a sudden, he's fifth. Nobody's been able to get around Mr. Capco down here, but Doug Coletta, Tony Schumacher, Mike Salinas, they've all stepped up pretty big. You get a rematch of round one at Sonoma, first pair out, if Leah cannot improve here. I say that, of course, because historically 8-9 would race in round number one. And right now, Leah sits number nine. You know, Neil Strasbaugh and Mike Domagall on that team are desperate to get out of the nine spot. They want lane choice. Nine. There on the barrel valve tells his driver, Clay Milliken, get after it. Neil Strasbaugh tells his driver the same thing. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, yeah. so let's just get it out there. Both of us 
did not drive like champions a while ago. No, we we, we gave our, uh, our we gave our teams a royal treatment of basically racing that run right Q two. There wasn't anything to learn off a two step there and me slow rolling in the throttle uh. like leaving off of your light. But that's what. That's what. That's why they give us three qualifiers. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. And then both of us, right then, y'all could have made a sandwich before okay. we left the starting line. Ah, yeah, well, you, listen, wait. We prioritize the race car. Exactly. That is all right. Great job. Uh, so yes, both of us messed up a while ago, but we both made good runs. She made a really good run. She went 76. We went 380. We'll take that. John's not mad at me this time. I didn't do anything wrong. Not yet. Not yet. He said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we'll take that nice smooth 380. Y'all happy with that? Oh yeah. Good run. Yeah. Good run. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. Uh, all the plugs stay in that time, John? Yes, sir. That's a good thing. So I go over to Leah before we got in the car and I'm like, hey, you think we can do this without screwing it up? She's like, God, I hope so. Y'all ponder me this. There's water coming up in the shutdown area. Really? In the center. I can follow this speed. Yeah. And, uh, this thing is on lead. Yeah. It's on what? It's like, on lead. That's <laughs> like, how <clears throat> much you can do it here. I was telling my brother, he goes, uh, what happened before? I said, look, well, like, play a double step in. And I said, uh, um, and I said, set the timers off, you know, tenth and a half too soon. He says, now, don't get any wild ideas like the old man would and think he can get away with it. I said, no, I told Clay we learned something that we can't get away with. <laughs> He's like, all right, good. In other words, Connie would be like, hey, we can set them off sooner. Connie would be like, hey, I think they made it this far. Because <laughs> he'd be like, he go, Look, look at the split, we're there. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> so we show y'all most everything that goes on. But here's something I didn't really share. Kind of funny, causing us a lot of work. So this is how many times have we moved now, Donna, this weekend? She gives me the four signal. So when we... <laughs> So when we got here, they're like, you can't park on the grass. We know where to park. We've been coming to these racetracks for so long. And we didn't argue that because we don't want to get our big freaking Tiffany stuck. So we wait. And then the next morning, they knock on the door. They're like, okay, you can move. We literally moved like from right here to right here onto the grass. So we set the dog pen up. So that was, that was uh, move number two. We set the dog pen up, we're good to go. Then they, being NHRA, and it's not their fault, but they come and said, you can't park here. That's reserved for somebody else. So we move again. That's move number three. Set the dog pen up again. Dog pen number two. So now, look at this sky, y'all. Rain's coming. We decided on our own, we're moving because we don't want to have to deal with trying to pull out a motorhome that's all fiberglass on the front. So move number four, and Donna is here reconfiguring the dog habitat because we're now on all asphalt and we want some grass. So all that being said, which has nothing to do with racing, I know y'all don't care, we are qualified number five. Yeah, who we raced, Donna? Uh, Buddy Hall. We raced Buddy Hall in the morning, first round. Buddy made a couple pretty good runs. So we'll see what we get in the morning. We got to get the dog habitat set up again. Hopefully for the last time in Topeka. Okay, we're all set up again. Number four. All right. Now we got to go get... Uh, Scooter. The scooter and the Durango and set the inside back up. And then set the inside back up. <laughs> but you know what? We love this stuff. Sometimes you just do it because you're told to do it. And that's what we've done. And this time we moved because 
We don't want to get stuck. Yeah, look, it's coming. Hopefully we get to race tomorrow, but I hope you've enjoyed watching qualifying Topeka. Don't forget, description is in my, I said that all backwards, link in my description for t-shirts. Y'all guys are buying them up and I know we're out of some sizes. We're getting that filled back right away. As always, appreciate you watching, liking, subscribing, sharing. See ya on race day.